Hello, welcome to the Thursday, November 9th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Miami, Florida. Software extensions to keyboards on mobile devices have long been known to exfiltrate data. Many of these software keyboards have legitimate reasons to do so, like uh, for example for auto completion algorithms or for spell checkers and the like that run as a cloud service. So keystrokes need to be exfiltrated in order to actually provide these services. But of course this feature can easily be abused in particular if a company loses control over these cloud services or of course if a keyboard is created by a malicious entity. Mechanical keyboards have so far not used features like this until now. Recently users of the Mantis Tech 104 key mechanical gaming keyboard found that their keystrokes are being exfiltrated to a web service in China. Keyboards typically do not have network connectivity, but in this case, the special driver used by the keyboard is used to exfiltrate the data. This cloud driver, as it is referred to, is collecting performance data and passing it to the manufacturer of the keyboard. Of course, uh, this performance data includes actual keystrokes, or at least it can include them from the data. I have seen, however, it isn't clear if the actual keystrokes are being exfiltrated or if it's really only the number of keys that are being pressed. But either way, uh, confidential data is leaked, and of course, this cloud driver could easily exfiltrate additional key data and definitely could exfiltrate keystrokes. The report I will link to in the show notes includes the IP address and additional details about the exfiltrate data so you could write some signatures for that. There appears to be no simple way in the cloud driver to disable the exfiltration. So you have to either stop using the keyboard or disable the driver. As far as I understand it, the keyboard will still work as a basic keyboard without the special driver, but some of the more advanced features, which is why you may have purchased this keyboard, may no longer work. And if you're using a Logitech Harmony Link device, you better check your spam folder for an important message from Logitech. The Logitech Harmony Link device allows you to use your smartphone or computer as a remote. It is sort of part of that Logitech Harmony remote control that's also uh, being sold. To make this device work, Logitech apparently licensed intellectual property from a third party and this license will expire next year. Logitech decided not to renew the license, which means that Logitech, in order to avoid being sued for using this intellectual property, will, starting in March next year, roll out a firmware update that will remove the intellectual property in question from the device. The only problem here is that without this function, the device is no longer actually operating. Logitech is offering a 30% discount on the successor device, but does not offer an option to keep your device working after March 2018, unless you're preventing the firmware update. The device started selling in 2011, so it's uh, by then about seven years old. I did a quick Google search and still see it for sale today. It is no longer really sort of listed on Logitech's website. You can still find it in the support pages, but uh, even there, there isn't really a lot of uh, data available about it. Logitech also started removing posts on its support forum that criticized the decision to actually discontinue this device. In the end, this may become an important legal test case uh, to figure out uh, if and for how long manufacturers have to support devices like this. 
We had, of course, plenty of cases where manufacturers stopped supporting devices, but that usually means the device still continues to work. You just won't get any additional updates like security fixes or additional features for that device. An exposed Amazon S3 buckets have become a recurring issue in data breaches. To respond to this, Amazon is introducing a number of new security features. Probably the most important one is a simple warning that is displayed in your Amazon console whenever an S3 bucket is publicly accessible. In addition, the owner of a bucket can mandate that all objects inside the bucket have to be encrypted. The detailed inventory report will also include the encryption status of each object, so you can use that then to apply automatic policies and verify if these policies are actually being followed. The features are available as of Monday, so you may have already seen them in your Amazon console. According to some scans of Amazon's storage service, about 7% of S3 buckets are exposed. Of course, some of them may be intended to be public, but of course there has been a number of high-profile breaches that uh, were caused by exposed data within Amazon's cloud services. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.